Well, good morning to Pastor John at James River and to Pastor Mac here at uh, Buford Road Campus. And uh, why don't we greet our Facebook folks? Would you help me greet them? Welcome them with applause and welcome them. Glad they're joining us wherever they are. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad the uh, bumper video was not about any of you today, although some of you look familiar. I don't know. I'm not sure. Dana loved to go and visit her grandfather, except there was one problem. In this small town in which he lived, there was a siren that went off every day. It harkened back to the days when the main factory in town, it was a whistle that blew that let all the factory workers know it's uh, time to break and uh, take, take time for your lunch. But the problem was, Dana, this was the thing that just kind of unnerved her, this listening to this siren every day at noon. And so her grandfather decided to help her by saying, look, Dana, when you hear that siren, just stand up and say at the top of your lungs, everybody go home and eat lunch. And that'll help you. And sure enough, it did. It just kind of calmed her. So she almost got to where she was expecting it and looked forward to it. And all went well until the next Sunday when they were in worship and the pastor went past noon. The siren went off and she stood up and said, everybody go home and eat your lunch. <laughs> the problem was they promptly got up and left. <laughs> I got to tell you, after reading our scripture for today, I wonder if there were not times in the life of Jesus when he too didn't want to stand up and say, look, everybody go home and eat your lunch. We're on this uh, journey, this series about the healing ministry of Jesus. We began last week by claiming the, uh, and affirming Jesus is a healer. Amen? Amen? He is a healer of the seen and the unseen. Part of the challenge is, is that the church, you and I, the Jesus family, we do really well supporting each other with the seen illnesses. Those things that can be diagnosed, those things that we can see and we pray for one another, we support one another and say, oh, be sure and tell us about that. But we're not as compassionate, we're not as open with the unseen illnesses. And so the challenge was brought to us as the church, as a part of the Jesus family. It's part of our uh, strategy of being the Jesus family to make sure that we, we support one another with the compassion, especially in unseen illnesses, me mental illnesses, uh, whether it's panic disorders or, or eating disorders or uh, addictions or depression, whatever it may be. We're called to respond to that with just as much compassion. Well, today we continue this series of the healing ministry of Jesus. And in our story for today, Jesus is called upon to heal the fever of Peter's mother-in-law. Now, I don't know about you, but most of us really don't think about Peter, the disciple, being married. But he is. Well, I kind of got tickled thinking about Peter having a mother-in-law because we, we understand this. Peter's kind of impulsive and impetuous and really kind of quick to speak. I just kind of wonder how that worked out with his mother-in-law. But anyway, after healing her, the gospel of Mark tells us that people brought the sick and the demon-possessed and gathered at the door of where Jesus was staying. Now, in my sanctified imagination, I imagine a horde of people. Uh, not a mob, they're not out of control, but there's a mob of numbers of people who have crammed into perhaps the narrow alleyways of the street outside this particular house where they have seen with their own eyes the Messiah went to, Jesus, the one who can heal. Now, now all of a sudden, the crowd is not spread out on a hillside where there's room to breathe. Now the crowd is not gathered in a synagogue where there may be pews or seats or rows in an orderly fashion. No, what we have here is that Jesus is, it looks outside and sees this crowd gathered at the door, right at the door, who are in need of healing, uh, both of the seen and the unseen. And so in the midst of this, we're told that Jesus healed many who had various diseases and drove out many demons. What I want to call your attention to is the very next line in the story where Jesus has an interesting response the next morning. Scripture says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Now, let's be honest. In my sanctified imagination... I have no reason to believe that the night before when Jesus went into the house where he was going to stay, that all the crowd dispersed and said, well, we'll just come back in the morning. I don't think so. Something tells me those folks who had seen and witnessed with their own eyes what Jesus had done to heal many in the multitudes of the seen and the unseen, nobody was leaving anywhere because they wanted to make sure that they were there when Jesus got up the next morning. 
And so in my mind, they're gathered outside the door. They're literally littered in the roadway there. But this is an interesting thing that happens in that in the middle of the night, while it's still dark, it occurs to me that Jesus entered into this covert operation. We might call it Operation Timeout because he needs to get away. Indeed, the fact of the matter is he needs to get away from the hordes of people for a timeout. He needs to separate himself from the crowds, a timeout. He probably needs to separate himself from the disciples, time out. He needs to go away, time out. Now, when I say time out in today's vernacular, well, obviously we were talking, uh, showing the visible of that in that, uh, um, you know, in the parenting world, time out means one thing. I, I read this uh, story about a, a young mom who had been reading up in, in, you know, parenting's first book, What Happens When Your Child Misbehaves. And she had read about this thing called time out. And so when her child misbehaved, the mom looked at the child and said, now, if you don't stop, I'm going to put you in time out. Well, the child had never heard of it. So the child said, well, what's time out? And this is what the mom said, and I quote, Timeout is a form of behavior modification that involves temporarily separating a person from an environment where unacceptable behavior has occurred. Now, the goal is to remove the person from an enriched, enjoyable environment and therefore let, lead to extinction the offending behavior. End of quote. Now, you and I both know that's not what the mama needed to say. No, no, no. Here's the description of timeout. You're behaving so badly I'm going to put you in the corner so that I don't hurt you. And I'll be back to get you in a little while. Can I get an amen? Come on, anybody home? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, in recent times, you, as you know, time out has become the kind of go-to punishment. But I found myself thinking, oh, man, you know the pain that would have saved me had that been entered into my generation, right? Any, any, uh, yeah, okay, I'm sure it was just me. But it wasn't, it's not just in parenting we have time out. We have time out in sports vernacular as well. And in sports, a timeout is this halt in play. Play is stopped. And during the stoppage, some really important things take place, which are just as applicable to what Jesus did. During a timeout and the stoppage in play, a coach gets his team and begins to communicate with them. The kind of things he does is to determine strategy. He inspires and challenges. He, he boosts morale. And if the play is bad, he calls that out and says, stop doing that. Do this instead. That's a timeout in sports. And then we understand there's a timeout in life where we actually kind of a, have a suspension of activity. We, we come away and, and spend a little time recharging and, and recreating away from our kind of usual work and our routine. Take all of those definitions, and here we have the Messiah. We have uh, Jesus, fully human and fully divine. One with the, ha the power and the presence to heal, the capacity to heal the seen and the unseen. The one who can help anyone at any time. He says with his feet, in accordance with his mind, soul, and body, I need a time out. I've got to go. And so he sneaks out under the cover of darkness. Operation Time Out. Perhaps the healing ministry of Jesus to you and to me, to his church, to whomever, really, like him, we need to learn to take time out, to pay as much attention to it as Jesus did in order to disconnect from others, to disconnect from technology, to disconnect from demands, to kind of disconnect from the rat race of life, really to take this opportunity to simply be with the Heavenly Father and to listen Yes, surely to spend time talking, but also to listen. We understand this in our emotionally healthy spiritual culture that we're creating at Bon Air Baptist Church. We understand that a failure to come away and to take not just one time out during the day, but several time outs during the day, if we don't do that, we're actually doing violence to our souls. Because you see, if we don't create the capacity during the day to be with God... That's okay. Society says we'll fill in gladly. And you and I both know that's not always with the healthy stuff. And so when I, when I say Jesus wants to do some healing in our lives, I'm not just talking about physical healing. I'm talking about mental healing, emotional healing, 
relational healing, spiritual healing, financial healing, you name it. Wherever you and I may suffer in this world, Jesus wants to be the healer. He has the capacity to be. And yet, he needs for us to come apart before we come apart. The words of Leonard Sweet. I don't need to tell you how frantic our life is and the kind of pace we live. Our Creator did not make us to be supermen and superwomen. Indeed, our challenge is to try to find a way to live a, a balanced life, if you will, especially in this complex, high-speed world of instant gratification. Because we understand we're living in the we-want-it-all-and-want-it-right-now world. It's what's provided for us. Listen, that's why people love sitcoms so much. You got 30 minutes. You turn it on, it begins. You have your cast of characters. They introduce a problem and bingo, by the end of the show, it's solved. And everybody goes away feeling good until the next episode. That's the way we would love to do life. Lord, come and give us a 30-minute response to the issues that many of us have created in our own life. And there have been some that have been created by others. And we need healing in this. The pace that we're living is incredible. Come on. Who remembers these days? Raise your hand. Who remembers when the only telephone you had, I know, plugged into the wall? Hello, raise them up high. You know, okay. Plugged into the wall. And so it would ring. There wasn't a ring volume control. You couldn't mute it. It rang. And if you were there, you would pick it up and say, hello. And if you weren't there, what happened? Well, nobody answered. And they would what? Call back. It is a great thing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, they would actually call back. This was in the day there was no answering machine. Right? Can, can you imagine? Well, I, I got to say to you that what that actually promoted was that if they didn't get you on the phone, the world didn't stop. The world didn't come off its axis. You, are you with me? You tracking? And then we have today, let's fast forward 40 years and well, now we're living in fast forward. That's the truth of the matter. Technology has now created a world in which we live where we are constantly able to plug in. Indeed, internet provides the option to always be available 24-7. And the problem for that, with that for many of us is there's this guilt thing that says, oh my gosh, I've got to keep the ringer up and on. There's no telling. Anybody might need me at any moment. And gosh, if I'm not available, well, the world would end. At least that's the message we send. With the internet, we have the freedom now to work anywhere at any time, which really confuses the lines between where does it stop? Where does home kick in? And we just go home and we be present at home. Those lines have become blurred. They've become confused. I mean, instead of completing the same amount of work uh, more efficiently, what's really happened is we've just kind of expanded our to-do list. Because now if we're connected technologically, my goodness, it never stops. It never stops. The Internet and other technological advantages expose us to more information than we can process. Our to-do lists have grown exponentially. The Internet provides really some instant gratification and connectability leading to these kinds of expectations that we, well, we no longer have to wait for anything. We can get connected and get it done right now. And everyone seems to be in a rush all the time. As I said earlier, God did not create us to be super men and women, able to do it all and quickly. We were not created to be human doings, but human beings. You see, being is about a presence. It's about a relationship factor. I can say that I love you and my language, love language may be that I do all kinds of things for you, but if I'm never present just being with you, then it's not reaching its full exponential value and capacity. The same is true with God. The same is true with God. If we're so busy doing, we don't have time to be with him. God, don't you know I love you? Look at everything I'm doing for you. Now, would you stop? I got things to do for you. You say, well, that's crazy. It is. You're absolutely right. We're not created to be human doings, but human beings. And that, my, friend, my friends, means we have to be intentional 
at being present, which requires you and I to stop, to plan to stop, not just once, not just twice, maybe three and four times a day. It's where the axiom in the Bible comes that says pray without ceasing. Well, you have to be able to call God to mind in order to pray. So take these times during the day. If it's one minute, five minutes, or 20 minutes, this is not about, this is not about the burden of being with God. This is about the invitation for us to experience His, His capacity to heal us. To heal us wherever we are in life. To take time out. See, I've discovered this like never before. I mean, I, I can have my kingdom moments in the morning for devotion. I'm an early morning guy. I wake up and I, you know, I get dressed and, 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 and get ready for work and have these moments with God that just feel like mountaintop moments. And that's so good until about three hours later I find myself on 288. And God has released, released all the idiots of Chesterfield County <laughs> and said, Tom is on the interstate 288. Go now. It is time to test him. May the demons abound in the left-hand lane of 288. Just do 54. I know it's 65. Do 54. Let's see how he does. I don't know how many timeouts you need. I need more than one throughout the day, whatever it is that pushes your buttons. Jesus needed timeouts. So what makes us think we don't? When I talk about the capacity for healing here, what do you need healing for physically? What medical reality are you facing where you find yourself fearful because you're out of control? I mean, I, I, my body is not the same body it was 30 years ago, right? I react to 40 degree weather with cold, drizzling rain. I'm smiling, but not on the inside. My joints hurt. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, please. Half of you are half dead. Stick with me. <laughs> what, what is, what's the physical thing that's challenging you? A timeout allows you and I to bring that before God. But it's not just physical, it's mental. What's the unseen demon that's strangling you? What kind of, uh, is, it, is it panic? Is it anxiety? Is it depression? Is it, is it whatever the, the, the shame and stigma of society is saying, don't tell anyone whatever you do. Tell Jesus. Get with Jesus and tell Jesus. Emotionally, what, what do you need healing here? What, what change has occurred in your life that has you upside down? What about financially? You in debt? You have worries over the future? meeting your bills, you're living paycheck to paycheck? Are you trying to live in that reality of, you know, there's never enough mentality? Or do you feel the, the, the worries of the safety and security of hoarding? Maybe it's not financial. Maybe it's relationally. Who are you holding hostage? You need to be healed from that. Who are you refusing to forgive? Who do you need to go to and say, I forgive you. Release me. Spiritually, are you loving God to the fullness of your capacity? Are we loving God well? You see, in emotionally healthy spirituality, to love God well is seen and witnessed and testified in our ability to love each other well. That's why we say you cannot be spiritually mature and remain emotionally immature. Jesus may be in your heart, but grandpa's in your bones. And the invitation is to chase that cycle out of destruction or negativity, whatever that may be, and allow Jesus to get in our bones as well. God's capacity for healing us in any one of these realms grows exponentially when you, when I, when we stop and call time out. Not just once a day. Several times a day. James 4, 8 reminds us, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. What do you think happens? What have you experienced that happens when you're in the full presence of God? It's healing like no other. 
There are countless studies that have proven over and over scientifically and physically those who spend time in meditation, stopping, slowing down, and for us, being with God makes all the difference in healing capacity. It's been proven. Healing that comes from consistent daily time with God really is both in the moment and preventative in nature. It's this incredible, well, not just diagnosis, but treatment plan. Come walk with me. Come be with me, he says. May I pose a question? Time out is not meant to be punitive. Why do we look at this as, I don't want to go to time out. Jesus did it. The Son of God. And I keep saying to myself, Tom, if he needed it, you surely need it. Don't you say amen. <laughs> Maybe Alexander Lowen was right when he says, and I quote, In my opinion, the hectic and almost frantic pace of modern living is a clear sign of fear. A fear we have of being and of life. As long as this fear exists in a person's unconscious, he will run faster and faster and do more so as not to feel nor face his fear. In other words, maybe, just maybe, you and I are afraid to slow down and to be quiet and to be still because not only will God will be there, who else will be there? We'll be there. I started to bring you a picture today of the person that frightens me the most in life. It really wouldn't be a picture, it would be a mirror. Me looking in the mirror. That's who most frightens me. Because God has given me a freedom and a potential to either draw nigh or to run to a foreign country like the prodigal son. And I don't have to go anywhere geographically to do that. Most folks, most of us are afraid of being alone. To sit with our thoughts. It can feel like the walls are pressing in on us. Yet if we can get past the fear, I want to say to you, being in God's presence for you and for me and for His church really is this place of renewal, of peace, of joy, of healing. Of healing. It's a time to allow God to do a supernatural thing in us. It's not something you and I do. It's something that God does in us that we cannot do for ourselves, And so the road of healing for us is this faith that says stop. Just as Proverbs says, wait on the Lord and He will save you. The psalmist cries it over and over throughout all the books of Psalms. The psalmist says, my soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. I wait for the Lord. My soul does not want. And in His word I do hope. You talk about a covert operation, operation timeout. Taking multiple times a day to be with Jesus is the secret, really, to His presence, which then gives us access to power and love and faith and grace and, yes, healing. Healing that sets you free, healing that sets me free, healing that sets His church free. I was an interim pastor at Buena Vista Baptist Church years ago, and I was driving 50,000 miles a year calling on pastors, and during this interim, I met a, 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 a person on staff there, you know, those kind of people that just they, just, they just are saturated with the presence of God, and so when she spoke, I listened, and I was, I was getting it down the road, and we were talking about life at her church, and you know, what kinds of things needed to change, and I was challenging her, and she said, Tom Stocks, I, I, I've never known anybody to move as fast as you. I kind of grinned and I said, well, you know, I got two, I got two speeds, fast and faster. She said, well, l l let me say this to you. She said, I wonder how many times you were going so fast you went right by God. That required an emergency exit off of 81 around mile marker 139. I remember it like it was yesterday. She spoke a reality in my life I've never forgotten. Moving so fast that it didn't take time out. We do violence to our souls 
when we neglect timeouts with God daily. We cry out for healing physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, relationally, financially, however it may be. Yet we refuse to allow for the capacity for His exponential power to take place in our life. To give us what we really want, need and desire to be set free, to be healed. Because we've spent our whole life doing for God instead of being with God. So the invitation, the challenge to receive His healing is to practice this incarnational presence, to really be present. And i got to tell you, I, in writing this sermon, I thought to myself, you know what, this is so important. I could just, man, I could just keep on preaching. I could just keep on preaching past noon. But the siren would go off. And somebody would stand up and say, y'all go home and eat lunch. If Jesus needed it, why don't we? Pray with me. Oh, Lord, I confess. I confess before you in these moments my fear of stopping, of slowing down. Oh, to some degree, Father, I, I find I'm fearful of coming into your full presence, but maybe even more so my own, to be fully aware of my presence before you. Oh, Father God, may I just and all of us feel drenched in your grace, in your forgiveness, in your call to come and receive your presence as a gift that has within it this exponential capacity to be healed, to be transformed, to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. So much so that we not leave the place we have come to worship in these moments the same way, but that we leave changed. God, it's your invitation, not mine. But I pray those who have ears, let us hear. And respond faithfully. In your son Jesus name we pray. Amen.